Good morning, everyone. We're joining you from Horseshoe Bend Cellars and Winery, just outside of Wichita Falls, Texas. This is a harvest host that we tried out last night. We thought that since the exterior tour of the base camp won't take that long, we might do a combo video that highlights uh, the things that harvest hosts have to offer, as well as give you a, a good exterior view of the uh, base camp 20X. Without further ado, let's tour the base camp. All right, so we're starting out on the driver's side, the front of the base camp. One of the key differences between the uh, X models, or the upgrade to the X model, is the addition of these rock guards. Um, these are good for keeping rocks coming up from trucks in front of you on the highway and uh, hitting the, uh, the aluminum in the front here. If you don't opt for the X package, I believe this is coated with a 3M material, which still offers some uh, semblance of protection, uh, but doesn't give you the uh, quite the same as the uh, rock guards here. Behind the rock guard is the exhaust for the battery port. Now that's only if you have a lead acid battery. It doesn't require venting if you have any AGM or lithium batteries, but you'll find that right behind the rock guards here. Moving down right below the rock guard is the ZAMP solar plug. So this is a proprietary plug um, put in here by ZAMP, but you can put any type of solar panel you want on this by just getting this little piece right here, which reverses the polarity. So if you want to put a Renogy panel like we have right here, uh, we have a 100 watt Renogy panel that uh, just gives us an extra boost. One of the new additions to the 2021 models is the uh, Airstream Smart Plug. So this is just an upgraded um, shore power connection. And instead of just your traditional plug that plugs in, this one actually has a connector in it and it stays in there nice and secure. And then the shore power cord itself has a little piece of plastic cap that protects the end of it. Underneath the plug is a little storage space and you can keep all of your your sewer lines and things like that or anything you really want to keep in here. Um, it's not dry storage so you make sure that you don't mind getting it wet but there's a lot of space. It goes all the way to the front here all the way to right here and then it's pretty far back. So we put our sewer hose connectors um, our water hose to uh, flush out the black tank under here if you can see that is the storage for your rv hose now i'm gonna regret doing this but um one of the things that we have a problem with even though this goes all the way to the other side of the rv is it's tough to get these uh these hoses into here so what we have to do is take off the cap push it in allow all the air to expand out and then once we have it in there we can put the cap back on but for a while we had a, a tough time getting that in there and then it just slides and secures into place all right one of the features that's unique to the new 20 series uh, 20 and 20x is the uh, separation of the tanks. So we've got a gray tank and a black tank. And then you've also got your fresh water tank. Uh, in the past, those were a combination tank. But again, anytime you're emptying this, you always want to go black tank first, get everything out, flush it out nice and nice and good with uh, water, and then close that, open your gray tank, which is going to be all your soapy water from the sink. And that allows it to clean out your your uh, your sewer hose. You also have a little push button light down there if, if you're doing dumps in the dark. Another upgrade to the X series, you get these big beefy Wrangler tires on 16 inch rims, and it also comes with a lift. So that gives you a little bit additional clearance um, that I'll talk about when we get to the back of the RV. Moving towards the back of the RV, you've got your suburban heater exhaust your water inlet for your black tank flush. So this is connected to a pressurized tube inside the black tank and allows you to give it a nice spray when you're emptying it out. Over here, you've got your fresh water tank and your fresh water inlet. And that's lockable. Below that is your city water in. So again, anytime you're connected to city water, you don't have to run your water pump. Everything is already pressurized and on, I believe, 
believe all the Airstream models, this is a regulated uh, water inlet. So you don't have to buy a separate water regulator if you don't want to. Over here, you have your on-demand hot water exhaust. And then right here, new to the 20, is the exterior shower. So on the 16 model, there's a cutout in the bathroom that allowed you to take the shower head from inside the RV, pass it through to the outside to do your shower. But as long as you're on uh, your water pump or your city water, this is gonna run and it's got hot and cold. It's also got a little connection right here. If you wanna rest it down here and mount it to the RV, should be really good for kind of washing off the dog or washing off any gear after coming off the beach. Right behind the axle, you're gonna find your fresh water tank and it's got three valves on it. And these are for winterization, so you can drain all your water lines. And this is your uh, water out. So once you wanna drain your fresh water tank, if you're not using it um, often, again, if you're, it's gonna be a week or more between trips, you wanna drain this out because the water's just gonna sit in there. So all you gotta do, Turn this nozzle, and it's got a little water deflector here. Um, pretty simple. Coming back, here's one of the stabilizer jacks. Um, you're gonna find two of these long ones on the rear, and then two shorter ones on the front of the RV. And then right here, you've got this little bumper here to make sure that you've got enough clearance. The great thing about this is you've got more than enough room to take this thing off-road and to, to bring it on terrain that's probably less forgivable due to the clearance. Um, I talked earlier about the lift on the wheels. Really what that does is that gets your tanks higher off the ground so you don't have to worry about scraping your tanks. And these are just an added protection that if you hear these things grind, you probably don't want to go for, back uh, any further. Here's the rear hatch. Again, you've got your window right here that's got the shade on the inside for privacy. The rear hatch opens up. Got these hooks right here to secure this from the wind and kind of blowing all around. The great thing about this is it allows you to put gear inside, load it up from the back so you can obviously fit a kayak, a canoe. Um, we load our generator through the back here and keep everything kind of situated right here. And in this spot right here, we leave for our solar panel so it doesn't slide around. On the back of the door, you've obviously got these nets that you can store gear in as well. Very important. Make sure you take your hook off before you close your door. And then it's got a little mount for that when you're traveling. Um, it has happened a few times that this thing will pop out due to the uh, road vibrations. Um, not a big deal, but you always wanna make sure that you secure it. In the hook. Well, on the curbside, in the rear of the RV, you've got this uh, 110 outlet that's available when you're plugged into shore power or on generator power. You've got another leveler right there. In front of your RV, you have this Airstream tongue box. You've got a little shelf over here. Uh, when you get this from the dealer, it's going to contain your leveler jack. It's probably going to contain your shore power cord. I would highly recommend not putting the shore power cord in here because this is not rainproof. Uh, when we took possession, the, the shore power cord was, was wet. Um, so we keep that inside the RV when traveling or when storing it. We just keep our, our leveler blocks, our chalk blocks, anything that we don't mind getting wet in this upper uh, storage area. And there you can take this out. And inside, you're gonna have your standard 20 pound propane tanks. We talked earlier about, I removed one of the 20 pound tanks to reduce weight. We're weekend warriors, so a, a 20 pound bottle of propane will last us two to three weekends uh, running the propane heater uh, full blast all night. But that alleviates some of the weight. And then what I plan on doing is actually building um, a lightweight insert in here just to add to the storage so we can put the RV water hoses and things like that in here. Base camp, similar to all of their Airstream's lightweight RVs, is going to come with your standard jack. It's not electric, it's your manual hand crank. Um, one of the issues I have with this is it's got the removable boot at the bottom. Uh, what that'll do is it'll fill up with water if it rains, and then you're, every time I forget about it, I take it off and it's just 
rusty water coming out of there. There are some different models out there. There's a, a lift and fold that as you crank it up, the boot comes up and clears so that you have uh, clearance and the ability to tow. There's, there's another base camp owner that reviewed that um, and she mentioned that it's not really stable. So she's looking at doing, um, going back to this, this type of model here. So uh, we'll see, we'll play around with it and maybe try it out and see how it works for us. So you've got your uh, seven point connector for the uh, vehicle. Now that's obviously gonna be your, your brake lights. It's gonna charge your battery while you're driving. Um, and if you have a brake controller installed in your vehicle, highly, highly, uh, not necessarily recommended. You should, you should definitely have a brake controller because um, this is a lot of weight moving behind your vehicle. We used uh, an install called Red Arc. It took me 15, 20 minutes. Um, the uh, Forerunner is already pre-wired for it. So you just have to get the connector through e-trailer or any other provider. And again, you mount it in and that, that actually, um, that will proportionally break your RV uh, while you're driving. Down here, we opted for the proven locks. This thing is a beast um, to secure the trailer while we're storing it. If you can get through this thing, uh, you, you probably deserve the RV. So finally, we'll just talk about the uh, brake release. So most modern trailers now have a brake release. So if you're traveling down the highway and God forbid the, the chains and the tow hitch disconnect, this will be connected to the vehicle. This will pull, it's a magnet, and that'll lock the brakes of your RV so that it minimizes the distance it travels after disconnecting. So if you haven't been formally introduced, this is our dog Trot. On the roof, you have two 90-watt solar panels connected to a Victron MPPT solar controller, a 13,000 BTU air conditioner, and a fantastic fan without the rain sensor. We just want to thank you for joining us again on the exterior view of the base camp. We'll put in some footage of the harvest host. Um, the, get, the, the owners here were exceptionally gracious. The wine was delicious. I highly recommend the cheese platter. That's it for now. We'll see you next week. This is our presser. So on the other side, when you, if you go on the other side, and excuse the big mess here, in the middle of bottling. So the grapes, you put the grapes up in there, they go up onto the, uh, the conveyor belt and everything come in here, 
And then if you saw that, and I'm not sure, uh, let's see why well, I can see them on top. You can see the little holes on top, and that's where the juice will come out into our barrel under here. So this is about one of the biggest crushers in Texas. This guy thought he knew he was going to make lots of wine. <laughs> Everything's bigger in Texas. That's what they say, and I'm beginning to think it's true. <laughs> This is one of the biggest bottling lines in Texas. Okay. Uh, we've been told that by the people that service it, that come and check on it, make sure everything's working the way it should be and everything like this. Uh, a lot of the other wineries around here and down and everything, they'll actually do it by a my mobile. A truck will come, they'll process all of their wine here. We actually have it in here and this is where we bottle. So we start there and all the way around to the labeling. He's in the middle of changing out because of different size of bottles. Now is this insulation? This is the insulation, yeah. Okay. So this was, like I told you, remember the story that he was a pilot and everything? Yeah. So his big hangar door was right there. Okay. <laughs> and so we insulated it. During the summer, if you came in here in the summer, that thing would be working this air conditioner and just constant. It's a constant 52, 55. So 